Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Turbos are awesome, but what happens when you remote mount them all the way at the back of the car? What do you gain? What do you lose? What do you say we test and find out? In this video, we're gonna test the effect of remote mounting twin turbos on a 4.8 liter LS. As you can see, we've greatly increased the length of the exhaust on our remote mount turbo system as much as 12 feet. We've also increased the length of the intake track by almost eight feet. So here's the question. How much of a change does lengthening the exhaust make? How much of a change does lengthening the intake track make? How much do both of them make? Do they make any change at all? Let's find out. To demonstrate the effect of remote mounting the turbos and the effect that it has on power and response, we're actually going to compare three different combinations. The first one is our 4.8 liter and the test motor is stock block crank, Gen 4 rods, JE pistons, uh, JFR camshaft, stock heads with springs, stock truck manifold, and we ran the stock truck exhaust manifolds feeding short sections into a pair of GT3582 turbos and an air to water intercooler we ran it at four different boost levels so we're going to take a look at that very quickly and then we can compare that to what happened when we remote mounted the turbos then we're basically comparing the stock exhaust manifolds and a short section of pipe versus a very long 12 foot section of pipe but with the same air intake length so what we're doing is testing these things individually we want to test the effect of the exhaust on, on the response rate and then the effect of the longer air intake on response rate and find out which one of those is more important. So let's get to our data on running it with the stock exhaust manifolds, a, sort, a short section of tubing and right into the turbos. So run in this manner, we ran it at seven pounds, nine pounds, 11 pounds and 13 pounds. So run at seven pounds, our 4.8 liter with the two GT3582s in the short configuration produce 613 horsepower and 560 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened. What we did was just go up with our uh, TC1 electronic boost controller. Here's what happened. We went up to nine pounds, 645 horsepower and 592 foot-pounds. Here's what happened when we went up to 11 pounds, 682 horsepower, 626 foot-pounds. And then finally to 13 pounds, 720 horsepower and 660 foot-pounds of torque. And if you take a look down here from 3,000 to 3,500, you can see this thing is basically kind of coming up and getting responsive on the turbo. It does not have full boost here at 3,200 RPM. That does not happen until after 4,000 RPM. So now we can compare this to what happened after we extended the exhaust length by 12 feet, basically remote mounting the turbo kind of toward the back of the vehicle. So let's check that out. So now we'll take a look at what's, what happened when we did our 12 foot <laughs> exhaust extension on this, basically simulating what happened uh, by placing, placing the turbos down at the back of the car, kind of the way guys do in the remote. Sometimes they put them in the back of the truck, sometimes they put them underneath and run scavenge pumps to run the oil up. But either way, we remote mount it and you have a long length of exhaust tubing feeding the turbos. So let's take a look at the power outputs take a look at what happened when we remote mounted the turbo with just the change in the exhaust. Same turbos, same wastegates, all that same TC1 controller, same setting, all of that was the same. All we did was add that length of pipe and I'll show you a, a picture or video here. You can take a look at see what, <laughs> what that looks like. Basically we ran it back from the stock exhaust manifold, the same one that we had been using before. All we had done is turn them around and ran the length of tubing back toward the back of the dyno and then looped it forward so that we could run the turbos basically in the same position that they were in when we ran the short section. But here's what happened when we ran a remote section. And again, we ran them at seven, nine, 11, and 13 pounds of boost. 
So run at seven pounds, it made 608 horsepower and 565 foot-pounds of torque. And if you take a look down here, and I'll do a comparison so we'll be able to see exactly what the change in response rate was, but there definitely is a change in response rate from that length of exhaust tubing. But here's what happened when we raised the boost. Just like it had in all of the other, the, uh, these other combinations, the power jumped up to 646 horsepower, 597 foot-pounds. We went up to 11 pounds, 681 horsepower, 625 foot-pounds. In the final run, 620-ish horsepower, 666 foot-pounds of torque. So it's doing the same thing in terms of the peak power that it was doing before in the shorter version before we extended the length of exhaust. But let's, uh, let's take a couple of these and we're going to compare them to what happened before we lengthened the pipe. So here it is at 7 pounds. This is with our long exhaust pipe, our remote mount basically. And here's what it looked like before we remote mounted it. So through most of the curve from 4,000 RPM or so all the way out to 6,800 6, where we ran it, the power output was basically the same. But the big change was down here from 3,000 to almost 4,000 RPM. And you can see the remote mounted turbos produced a lot less boost. They were a lot less responsive and a lot less power in that range. And they did that basically at every boost level. So remote mounting the turbo, the long length of exhaust, definitely plays a factor in the response rate of the turbo. And this is only on an engine dyno, which is not the ideal thing to demonstrate a boost response because we're not rolling into the throttle like the way that you do on the street or the way that you would on a racetrack, on a road race course or somewhere else. Basically, we're, we, we're park this thing at wide open throttle and then release it and then let it go. So the thing is, if it shows a change in response here on this, which is an optimized condition for turbos basically, because we full load it, um, you're definitely gonna see a change in response rate on the street. Now, if we didn't see a change in, in the response rate here on the engine dyno, we still could see a change on the street. And that's why I don't always like testing this stuff in terms of response rate on the engine dyno because it's not ideal. A chassis dyno is better and then the street is actually even better. But since we're seeing a change here, there is definitely a change. Let's take a look at one more, um, we'll take a look at one more power level here. So we'll go to the big boy. So this is the 13 pound run. And we'll compare that our 13 pound run with the short exhaust. And again, it's the same thing. We're seeing, and, and in fact, it happened farther out, but we're still seeing a, a big change and I'll get rid of the, the, the fuel here so it makes this thing less complicated. So you can see it, there's still a big change in response rate um, having the turbos remote mounted. So now the question is, because we remote mounted the turbos and have an extra long length of exhaust, what happens if we now add in a longer length of inlet tube? Because if you remote mount the turbos in the bed of your truck or back underneath your car towards the back of the vehicle, you also have to run the discharge tube from the turbo back up into the engine. So you usually have an intercooler in there. Some guys don't run intercoolers. But let's find out what effect the long length of discharge tube has on the response rate. So now we've added what, we, <laughs> what we've termed the snuffleupagus, the giant length of air intake tubing. And I'll go ahead and after I measure this, I'll go ahead and put the numbers up there to tell you how long we've extended this thing. But it's, um, it's gotta be 10 or 12 feet or so. But we, uh, we lengthened the inlet tube and we had the length of exhaust tube. So let's find out just how much just the inlet tube changes our response rate uh, between this. So I'll go through these very quickly. This is our seven pound run with the long air intake and the long exhaust. Nine pounds, 11 pounds, 
13 pounds. And I just want to show you that it did exactly the same thing that it did in every other condition. It, it, it did it with the remote mounted turbos. It did it with the non remote mounted turbos. It did it with twins. It did it with singles. This is what they do when you raise boost. It makes more power. So let's take a look now at the response rate. So this is at the lowest boost level. This is at about seven pounds. And this is with the long exhaust and the long intake. And if we compare that just to the long exhaust, Basically, the power curve is the same, except for this portion down here below 1,000. We're seeing a little bit of a difference, but knowing what I know about um, differences between runs and what I showed, if you haven't taken a look at the other video that I, that I posted last night or the day before, um, where I showed you what the effect is running uh, one of the runs kind of cold and one, running one of them hot, have the temperature of the exhaust ha plays more of an effect than, than you see here. And we see that when we go up and boost. So let's, let's pick another boost level and I'll show you the difference between the two. So if we pick the nine pound. So you can see, now this is the difference between the remote tube, uh, the, the long tube and the short tube, both of them with the remote mounted turbos. And as you can see, there's very little difference. There's a little bit of a difference at, at the top of the power peak and that could be a number of things. I, I don't think that these things make um, the power curve is the same. The peak power numbers are within a couple. So basically the curve is the same and I'm really most interested in the stuff down low. But what this looks like and what it tells me is the length of the discharge tube doesn't really come into play. It does not, it does not affect the response rate of these turbo applications nearly as much as the longer exhaust does. So I'll grab one more of these runs and see. So there's a slightly higher boost level. That's at 11 pounds. Just getting rid of my fuel here. So again, we see the same kind of thing. Actually, if anything, the, it looks like the, the longer air intake um, <laughs> seems to be making a little bit more on the top. Um, and it was a little bit less, you know, this four or five or whatever. It's, um, it's not very much. So like I said, I don't think that there's a big change in response rate from the length of the discharge tube. There doesn't seem to be. Uh, there was a big change in uh, the change of remote mounting the turbos with a, with an extended length of exhaust though. So there you go. The air intake, <laughs> not so much. The exhaust, definitely is. Let's take a look at some more data. Our final comparison is to take a look at the remote mounted turbos, the remote mounted turbos, both the exhaust and the long intake. And let's compare that to the single turbo that we ran with the GT45. Now obviously the single turbo has a standard exhaust like we, we have the stock exhaust manifolds feeding into a custom Y pipe with the GT30 or GT45 turbo mounted on the on the Y pipe. So I wanted to compare that versus this these remote mounts because this is something that a guy might be considering. So here is the power output. This is run at, at uh, nine pounds, 654 horsepower and 597 foot pounds for the twin GT3582s 82s in the remote mount form. And here is what happened when we ran the GT45, the single GT45 turbo, and you can see the GT45 turbo made less power than the twins, which it did even in non-remote mounted uh, con in configuration. But also take a look down here, once again, in this area down here from 3000 to 4000, the GT45 was a lot more responsive. So if you're thinking about maybe using this as a, <laughs> a truck application and you want more immediate response, um, and a 4.8 is, is, you know, as I talked about before, it's hard to get a good combination of, especially with 1,000 horsepower turbos and a small displacement, it's hard to have them be really good on both ends. That's why on the GT45, it has more response, but it'll never get to 1,000 horsepower. So on the 1,000 horsepower twins, they're very good out on the top end, but you can see they're kind of soft down low. But here's an interesting comparison too. Get rid of the GT45. This is the Summit Racing Turbo, and this is the big T6. So if you take a look, the Summit Racing Turbo run at the same uh, boost and controller setting. 
made more power than the twins do. And oddly enough, even with the big T6 housing and the big um, AR, the T6, the single T6 was actually more responsive than the twin GT35s were, um, especially in remote. <laughs> now I didn't run the single as a remote too to find out how much that affected it because obviously we saw a longer length of exhaust definitely has a change, definitely has an effect on the response rate of these turbos. But this is another interesting combination, but let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn on our test from remote mounting these turbos on our 4.8 LS? Well, there are a couple things. First of all, remote mounting the turbos definitely changes the response rate. The interesting thing is the exhaust seemed to make much more of a difference than the length of the intake track, and that's kind of cool to know. That way you know if I have to lengthen the inlet track to put my intercooler somewhere, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But here's the thing to think about. When you run big turbos, and relatively speaking, these are 1,000 horsepower turbos when you run them as twins, getting the balance between lots of power and response rate is sometimes difficult especially if we try to do it on a small motor like a 4.8 liter. It's always the balance. Sure, we all want lots of power, but we also want, as we saw in the dyno results, lots of response. And it's hard to do when you combine a small motor with relatively big turbos. Now, the cure to all of this, if you want these turbos to be much more responsive, if you want 1,000 horsepower turbos, and you want them to be very responsive, put them on a bigger motor. If we ran this test on a larger 5.3, or especially on a 6.0, they would be much more responsive and still capable of making the 1,000 horsepower. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More turbo testing coming up, but right now, I'm getting ready to take this off and put the other guys' new 455 up.